YouTube was good with y'all, man. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video in 4K. You know what I'm saying? Over the past few weeks, I've gotten quite some comments uh, of y'all asking me to do more emotional type tutorials uh, for artists like Rod Wave, Lil Durk, uh, and Lil Baby. So I figured today was the day, man. Today, I'm gonna be showing y'all all the ins and outs on how I make my emotional beats, man. Let's get straight to it. All right, so I got today's beat put up right here. Uh, I'm just gonna get right into it and uh, start out with the main melody, which, of course, is a piano. Uh, and like 90% of emotional beats. So I'm gonna start out by previewing the melody. Uh, I use Keyscape for the melody. I'm gonna show the preset later. This is what I started out with. We're working in uh, C minor, I believe. Bro, I said it before and I'll say it again, bro. I was damn near tearing up when i was laying this shit down bro for real this melody is it's kind of complicated i ain't gonna lie like it took me like 30 minutes to lay this down uh, and get it perfect uh, but i'm gonna deconstruct it the best way possible like i said we're working in c sharp minor as you can see usually i like to start on my melodies on the root note uh so on c but as you can see right here i'm starting on uh g sharp and for the people who watch my videos man y'all know I don't, I don't really be like going crazy on music theory like that uh so i can't explain like exactly what i did but i just kind of wanted it to uh, kind of build some tension you feel me like my approach to this melody was since i didn't start on the root note it will kind of build some tension uh when it actually played the root note you feel me so it, like really wants to go down to the c right here you feel me like it just it just made sense you feel me goes back up to d sharp so that's what i started out with for this melody start out with the root notes so basically uh, this part right here that's it and as you can see the first like three layers of the melody is just the same root note uh, copied over three times we can basically take these out uh, to make it a little bit easier so this basically that's that's the whole melody right there but of course i added some root notes under it to make it sound a little bit more full i'll uh, add some low end to the to the um, to the melody right here but yeah after i laid that down the root notes of course i went into the chords so i start out on uh, g right here the root note that i laid down build a triad g c on d sharp right here later on i pitch that up i kind of build a little rhythm that's basically what i started out with right here of course, I could have kept it like this. That's good as well. But I like to kind of um, delay some notes a little bit to build kind of a rhythm instead of just having the chords play. Otherwise, it would have sounded cool too if I just played the chords like this. That's more emotion to it, uh, in my opinion, if you kind of delay some notes. That's what I started out with right there. The try uh, right here. Then I pitched this up, delayed it a little bit, and uh, kind of built this uh, staircase right here. Kind of goes down d sharp d and a sharp and i just kind of experimented uh, with the notes till something sounded good of course i could have did this as well that's good as well but um i just like the way how this a sharp sounded right here next i added the g right here as you can see it's not the same note uh as a root note but it builds a lot of tension since they're next to each other in the scale you feel me if it would have used the uh, g sharp it would have sounded like this but it builds a lot of tension if i use a note that's underneath it Since the G sharp and the G like create a lot of tension, you feel me? And if they play at the same time, it creates even more tension. Last thing I did to this first chord was at this ghost note right here, in a lower uh, lower velocity. Since that's something like I feel like real piano players do. Of course, I don't play the piano, but it just sounded human, you feel me? Instead of this, just some some little shit that I experimented with. That's it for the first chord right here. After that, I um, gradually wanted to go down to C. So um, from G sharp, it goes down to F. From F goes down to C right here. Uh, it's kind of a big gap between the G sharp and the C, as you can see. So that's why I chose for the, let's put an F right here. For the F, um, pretty much the same thing as the first chord. Like that, G sharp, uh, you can see right here. Uh, it comes back uh, in an octave higher. The reason why I chose to pitch some notes up is um, if I would have kept all the notes right here, like it would get very muddy in one place of the frequency spectrum. So I like to kind of space it out a little bit. Makes it sound a lot more full. So like I said, build this triad right here. This is G up and kind of delayed it a little bit. Uh, the same as I did right here with the, the D sharp. Next, once again, I added two notes next to each other in the scale. This G sharp and this G right here. Just build some rhythm once again. With the C right here, of course, could have uh, kept it as a chord. But I decided to add this little ghost note right in front of it. In the lower velocity as you can see after that uh like i said went down to c uh, which is the scale we're working in but right in between these chords i kind of added this little like staircase if that makes sense like it just transitions nicely instead of uh, not having it that works too but i like to add uh, these kind of rolls in between for the rest uh, when it comes to this chord 
you'll probably see these notes again right here it's the d sharp it's set up an octave and it's g right here oh, i pitched that um up an octave two and delayed that two and i got this c on top which is the the root note of this chord picks up two two notes and this c right here basically the first notes that you hear in this chord are the root note c and then once again this little ghost note there's probably a name for that but like i said i don't know shit about music theory so and i kept this uh, pretty open as you can see right here we got a lot of notes going but i decided to keep this open uh, for these two chords right here so it really builds a lot of tension we don't like have any notes playing for a little minute then at the end right here we got another c and a d sharp uh, so it stays on c a little break right here goes back to c and then up to a uh, d sharp and the reason why i made it go up is so it kind of transitions nicely into the g sharp instead of it going down like it wouldn't make sense you feel me because if you look at the root notes it's kind of an arch like start on g sharp make it go down to c and then uh, back up and what i did at the end right here is i decided to kind of uh, strum the notes a little bit or strum the chords so it kind of goes up it's not like too many notes playing at once uh, as we got right here if you take a listen to these two chords it kind of builds up a little bit like a real piano player is playing it and i ain't gonna lie i probably spent like 15 or 20 minutes on these notes right here it's basically experimented with the notes till something like sounded right uh, so for example we got this c the G that we got right here, but oh, it's the first two notes that come in with this uh, chord right here. And if y'all are struggling with what notes to use, uh, it's a small tip I can give y'all. As you can see in the scale, we're skipping one, two, three notes in the scale. We also skip three notes in the scale right here. That's pretty much the same distance in notes uh, in both chords. For the rest of the notes, just follow the scale and just practice and experiment with the notes. Oh, so this note could have also like been a C, but I just decided to pick a, a A sharp since I liked it better. Same goes with these notes right here. Like this could have been a D as well, but it actually sounds better. Hold on. Feel me? Like anything works. It's just like a matter of practice. And after that, as you can see, of course, I strummed. Uh, the notes a little bit and played around with the velocities so right here like you see the the notes don't like start all at once kind of like manually uh, dragged all these notes to like different positions to make them sound more or human more uh, natural and i did that all by hand so i just uh, held option or alt i just dragged them a little bit to something sound right like i said of course after that i played around with the velocities so i really uh, made some notes stand out for example this d sharp right here it sounds a lot better you feel me like a, a real piano player wouldn't like play all the notes at the same like level of course same with this g really makes it stand out that's way more emotion to it by the way use this uh, preset for the melody the la custom c7 cinematic from a uh, keyscape turn off the reverb uh, since i like to have my own reverb after after that i decided to add a top melody on top of the piano uh, to take out in a verse for example in the intro i don't have the top melody playing with the uh, second part of the intro i do uh, just to kind of be able to alternate between the two you feel me not have it be like too repetitive so that's what the top melody sounds like and i ain't gonna lie i probably spent another like 15 20 minutes just laying this down just to get it perfect i believe i started this melody out uh on my midi keyboard just kind of experimenting a little bit like i wouldn't be able to have came up with this like without playing it on my midi keyboard like i said it's not really rules for this like of course i could start out on the f it doesn't really make that big of a difference but i did make sure to kind of use these stabs right before uh, these little rolls just makes it sound a little bit better also added these rolls right here so it kind of fades into this uh, G. It's exactly the same pattern. Then instead of it going from A sharp to G sharp, I add these two notes uh, right here. Very easy way to just build more tension and more emotion to it. Now for the next four bars, as you can see, if I copy this over, it's almost identical, but I decided to uh, switch some things up. Like I changed this up right here. These two notes right here. Another layer was added on top of it. Like I just experimented so something sounded good. And then once again, like I said, to switch it up, I had this little uh, little rhythm, this little pattern at the end. Just a little catchy pattern, a little catchy rhythm, just to kind of catch the listener's ear a little bit different. Uh, and that's it for the piano, man. Like the most complicated part of this entire tutorial. Uh, so the effects that I put on the piano, 
start out with this uh, EQ right here, the shelf, cutting some of the lows out, uh, some of the uh, highs out, since you don't need those at all. Next, I kind of enhance the frequencies of the piano a little bit, brought up some of the presence right here at the, uh, the highs, and also boost some of the low mids. Next, I put two compressors on it, start out with this uh, CLA 76, uh, to take out the harsh frequencies, uh, the harsh stabs. After that, I open up this LA 2A, it's kind of smoothing it out a little bit, kind of even out the signal. Uh, it doesn't do too much, but it kind of, like I said, evens it out a little bit. And lastly, put a file of vintage verb on it, with the uh, descendants right here. Pretty big reverb, just kind of uh, bring a lot of space to the melody. All right, so for the next melody, man, opened up SRX strings. I uh, got the first preset, the start preset, epic strings. And I just laid down the chords uh, that I laid down on the piano. So all I did that is I copied this over right here. That's always at my strings when I'm using uh, pianos. I copied it over and as you can see, I dragged all the notes to the left. So it kind of builds a chord. For example, this D right here, this D sharp, I dragged it to the left. This A sharp, I dragged that to the left. And this uh the g took out this ghost note and also dragged that to the left and i did the same to every chord just to kind of build chords it's an easy way to to, to add chords to it because if you look at it like this like all the notes that i laid down on the piano it's basically a chord but just strummed in a different way so i just um copied that over and laid down those uh those notes into chords and it just adds another layer on top of the melody so the string sound like with the piano Another thing is like a lot of people associate strings with emotion, of course. So that's why I like to add strings to my uh, emotional melodies as well. I uh, also decided to uh, randomize these velocities a little bit so it's not too like static. But effects on the strings, start out with this uh, EQ right here. This shelf cutting out the lows, um, bring some of the lows out to kind of make those uh, low frequencies of the, the violin or like the strings um, kind of make it sound a little bit more full. And then once again, brought out some of the presence, uh, lowered some of the, the mids, the high mids right here. After that, once again, add this LA 2 way a compressor to it to once again, even it out a little bit, kind of smoothen it out. And after the compressor, added the same file of vintage verb to it uh, with these settings right here. So next, another big part in this melody are these guitar saps right here with an automated delay. I'm gonna play it first. And after that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deconstruct it. By myself. Now I play these myself. I just uh, looked up guitar stabs in all of my kits. Oh, and I finally found these two. This one. And I kind of time stretched them a little bit so they um, match up with the BPM. Oh, and I kind of cut some of the uh, the harsh frequencies out. By the way, it's two stabs right here and right here. And I just copied them over. It's the same exact uh, pattern. But for the effects, like I said, start out with this EQ. I uh, just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Cut some of the lows out, some of the low mids, and boost a lot of the highs to really make those high frequencies stand out. After that, I got this uh, ping pong delay right here. It's a very short delay, uh, but of course, I decided to automate it so it doesn't like play throughout the first stab. But when the stab stops, you uh, of course hear the delay. Same right here. Just a unique way to kind of make it sound more interesting. After the delay, added some distortion to it. Uh, this plugin right here called Lil 2. Added some slight chorus to it. As you can see, it put the mix to around 20%. After the chorus, same for Hollow Fence Rep with uh, these sentences right here. Just kind of blend it with the, with the other melodies. And uh, that's it for the guitar. Next, we got another guitar, this bass guitar. Uh, I'm gonna play it first, once again, with the stabs, the strings, and the piano. Uh, that's what it sounds like. So the VST they use for this, I believe it's a stock VST from FL Studio. This one right here is called Temptated. You can just look it up in uh, NFL and it will pop up. It's a, it's a stock VST. Shout out my boy 808 League, man. He actually put me on this. Uh, I don't even know if it's a VST, man, but he put me on this, man. Shout out 808 League. So I uh, went to the piano, copied over the root notes, um, but I kind of wanted it to not be like too static. You feel me? So I kind of added some rolls in between. I'm going to just play it. After that, decided to render it out to audio clip. Sounds way better since I put effects on it. So let's get into that. Start out with the EQ right here. Cut some of the sub lows out since those get very muddy and you don't really hear them at all. So I like uh, to cut them out uh, around like 30 hertz. After that, decided to uh, cut the high frequencies out. This is a bass guitar. You don't really need those. I kind of enhance some of the, the frequencies uh, in the bass right here. The high mids. After that, I had this uh, CLA 76. Uh, with these settings right here uh, i like to use this on bass guitars just to kind of kind of push it down a little bit kind of even out the signal it's probably the most important part uh, i added this gtr amp mono uh, i got the waves bundle so i was just browsing through like preamps and stuff like that from waves that's what it sounds like without it sounds a lot better 
And then, of course, put the base in, uh, in mono. Right, so I believe we got two melodies left. Our first one is this Celeste from Expand. Oh, yeah, from Expand. Use the Celeste. It's under uh, Mallets. And I like down uh, five notes right here in the fourth bar. Just go down from G to the C. Very simple, like... Just some ear candy, basically, like, it's... Some simple. Just follow the scales from G, goes to F, D sharp, D, uh, down to C, since of course right here in the fifth bar, uh, the root note is C, so that's why I added it right there. Also added some effects on that, as you can hear, without effects. So it's way better. Effects I put on that is an EQ, got some of the harsh frequencies out, boost some of the high mids. Second EQ, uh, took more of the harsh frequencies out and also boost more of the, the high mids. After that, added some delay to it, or uh, stereo delay. These sentence right here, pretty chorus, uh, and a violin finish verb. So fill it in with the other melodies with these sentence right here. Uh, it's something very simple, it's all I have for this list. All right, and for the last melody, I got this flute right here. Well, it comes in twice in the entire beat in the second part of the verse, so it's uh, something you don't really hear too much in the beat. This is what it sounds like with the piano, all uh, the strings and the celeste. Just a little melody uh, to add more variety to it. Uh, like I said, it only comes in twice in the entire beat. I'll leave that down as I use arcade for that. This one right here. I'll just lay down some notes. After I laid that down, I just uh, rendered it out to an audio clip. Kind of chopped it up a little bit. Uh, kind of arranged it a little bit different. That's what I ended up with. Like, just be creative with it. It's, like I said, kind of chopped it up a little bit. But effects on the flute, start out with this uh, auto-tune. This is the flute itself, bro. Like, that shit didn't sound good at all. So I added some auto-tune to it on a C minor. After that, I got this EQ. Cut the lows out, some of the harsh frequencies out, and I uh, boost some of the high mids. It's got this LA 2 way compressor once again to compress the signal a little bit. And after the compressor, I added some hollow fitness rip to it uh, to add some more space, some ambience to it. It's pretty much it for the flute. All right, so I think I pretty much covered everything, man, when it comes to the melody. Uh, so after that, of course, I added some drums to it. And before we do that, man, of course, every single drum sample that I used uh, in this beat and every one of my beats came from my jump kits right here. My half a cent jump kit dropped it like a month ago and my uh, rookie season jump kit. These kits right here include everything you need to lay down hard drums man got 808s bonus loops claps uh, some snares open hats so if you haven't had a chance to get the kit yet man be sure to go check that out uh, if you're fucking with the sounds i have a link down the first link down in the description man so for the drums start out with a higher than the snare start out with a two-step pattern and after that i add some uh some slight rolls to it i didn't want to go too crazy on the drums since the melody was very complicated uh, especially in pain beats so like i said start out with the basic clap and snare pattern i laid a snare on top of this clap uh, and after that i added the highest to it uh, so this is what that sounds like So the snare that I used came from my Rook Season drum kit. Snare right there. Just a basic pattern and just layered them on top of each other. And after that, I used this high right here for my Heavisand drum kit. Start out with the two step, like I said, at this note, uh, an octave down. Next on the first bar, I added this roll right here. Spits it down. Then on the fourth bar right here, I added this roll. Spits it down once again. After that, I believe I just copied it straight over. So there's nothing too crazy. Just like I said, wanted to keep things simple. Uh, so after the snare, the clap and the hi hat, of course, laid down an 808. I uh, just copied over the root notes to stay in the scale, of course, and uh, laid down this little rhythm right here. Of course, I laid a kick on top of the 808, but I'm gonna get into that later. This is what the 808 sounds like. And as you can see, the 808 pattern really adds a lot of bounce to the beat, man. Like I said, I uh, start out with three 808s right here on the first uh, first root note. Next goes down to F and added two more notes on the fourth bar. Towards the end right there. Next it goes down to C. Double note right here. Double hit right there. And then, of course, following the root notes, goes up to D sharp again. Like I said, layer the kick pattern on top of that. This is what it sounds like with the, the 8 and the kick. And 
the kick pattern basically follows the 808, but I decided to uh, take some kicks out to uh, build more tension uh, and add more bounce to it. For example, this double hit that we got right here, took one of the kicks out. Right there. That's a lot more bounce to it, you feel me? After that, we got an open hat just to kind of complement the kick and the 808 a little bit. Uh, I put it on some of the kicks and some of the 808s. That's what the pattern sounds like. I'll let this pattern down, start on the first bar, the first note right there, copy this over three more times. Next, I added these two accent notes on the fourth and the eighth bar, uh, just to kind of make those stand out, not have it be too repetitive. And it really makes it sound better. It's a big difference. So after the open hat, the last thing which I added to the drums was this counter snare. And how I usually lay down my counter snares is I like to fill in some empty gaps, uh, kind of enhance the bounce a little bit. That's what that sounds like. this pattern right here start on the second bar copy that over and add this note in uh, right in front of it just to kind of make it uh, sound more unique compared to this part right here and lastly add this note right here at the end uh, and i just copied this pattern over to the to the next four bars so it's pretty repetitive all right so that's pretty much it man that's how i make emotional beats from scratch so i want to thank y'all for watching the video all the way to the end man hope y'all learned something from the video uh, and just like this video make sure to let me know in the comments what you're trying to see on the channel in the future or uh, any video ideas or anything y'all yeah, make sure to subscribe and like the video and shit like that man or uh, if you fuck with the drum sounds i used in today's video make sure to check it out i have a link down in the first link down in the description or uh, if you're interested in my drum kits and that's pretty much all i have for today's video man so i'm gonna catch you on the next one y'all stay safe man